Connection pools are very critical components in distributed architectures. In your Java applications, .NET applications, or whatever runtime you choose, you typically have a connection pool that allows the app to uh, get a connection out of a pool to connect to a database or an other downstream system. If those connection pools are not properly sized and you have an influx in traffic, then these requests need to wait. Or if something else is happening on the back end and these requests on the back end take longer, database statements taking longer and longer and longer, and therefore the connection stays open for too long for a single request, um, it may impact your response time on the front. So the reason why I bring this up today is I had a conversation with one of our users uh, this week, and he explained some symptoms to me about high failure rate, uh, actually high response time and then failing applications. And then he explained a little bit the architecture, and then I kind of suggested to look into the connection pools uh, because this could be an issue. And um, when I just came back from my trip, I found this dashboard here, and this is an our demo environment. And thanks to Thomas for building all of this, but I think it allows me to show you two things, two approaches of, uh, of analyzing and diagnostics. First, I want to show you the manual way of how I diagnose it, and then I show you how Dynatrace is automatically detecting these problems and, and telling you the root cause. So I have a Kubernetes workload overview dashboard looking at six clusters, 106 namespaces. This is just an overview of all the workloads that are running here. We can already see there's five ongoing problems in some of the services and some of the workloads. But I want to pay uh, put the attention on the response time here. So this is the response time of the top requests that are handled by applications that are deployed across these six clusters. And we can clearly see there's one of these that goes up uh, to like almost 18, 19 seconds. And if I hover over it, this is called something with minute min, right? It used to be very low, below one second, and all of a sudden it spiked. So this kind of allows me now to drill in and say, let's have a look at the service. Uh, what's the Minuteman service do? So the first thing I see, huge spike in response time, also failure rate, drop in throughput makes sense, right? If the response time goes up and failure rate goes up, then load that comes in is obviously dropping the number of requests it, it can fulfill. By the way, we see here an open Dynatrace problem. We'll come to this later because everything I show you now is completely automatically detected with the root cause. But let me show you how I would manually go there. Um, I also see based on distributed traces that my Minuteman app is accessing a MySQL database. We can also see here that MySQL, boom, had all of a sudden had a spike. That means my database might be the problem because the database took longer to respond, so things have been backing up. Uh, if I scroll further down, I now see my see that distributed traces. So I can look into, let's, um, let's pick the slowest one in this time range. 21 seconds, I click on it, and now I get to see an individual request that was taking that long. And it's very easy to spot. It seems that Minuteman app doesn't do much. It just executes two select statements on MySQL, very easy, simple ones, but it's still taking 21 seconds. But most of the time, pretty much everything is spent in wait. You can see it here, wait time, 21.6 seconds. It's pretty much everything. If I click on it, I get to see some details like the code level. So I can see where the wait time is really spent. And it is really in that get connection. Get connection is called probably multiple times and it's just waiting for a connection. And then it's also uh, waiting for the response from that um, SQL statement to come back. So it looks like it's waiting for about 10 seconds to get the connection. It's then waiting, it's then processing the, um, uh, the, the SQL statement, which also takes about 10 seconds. So overall, 20 seconds, give or take a little bit more, so we come up to the 26. So this is obviously an issue. So the application slows down. It takes a long time to get the connection out of the pool, and it takes a long time to then actually execute that query. So what else can we do? Uh, the next thing I would do is I would go to the process. So this is Tomcat. It's a Java-based application. That means I can analyze all of the performance uh, details system metrics, JVM metrics, but then also connection pool metrics. And here I can see it exactly at the 1600s uh, or four o'clock in the afternoon, we all of a sudden see that requests that are coming in uh, had to wait to get a connection out of the pool because those that were currently executing, uh, you know, took up to 10 seconds to get that response from the database, which was much longer than before. So something happened here, probably on the database but also the connection pool filled up here. And you can ask yourself the question, maybe you want to properly size it because now we know the size of that connection pool is only three. 
Uh, what else do we see here? If I if I quickly go back one step here, right? back, um, I'm here seeing the database. So I can click on that database and I can go to my database service, which is now basically the view on the database. And I can here perfectly see, similar to what we saw earlier, uh, here's the, at, at four o'clock in the afternoon, all of a sudden, the select statements that were executed spiked to 10 seconds. Also, some of them failed, throughput dropped. Um, we can see it had an impact on SQL transactions. And uh, I can see that the Minuteman app, so if I'm the owner of that database, I also see who is calling me. Um, I again also see distributed traces for every single request, but I think this is already pretty clear. Something is wrong with the database. I would then probably go into the logs, into the events and see uh, what's happening here. Now, this is kind of like the way uh, that you, that we can all analyze this, but you know, maybe you're not the expert in this. You don't know how to click through all these things. Now, let me go back a step again. Um, if we are back on our Minuteman service, and I'm pretty sure you know where I'm getting, what I'm getting at, um, I told you that there's a problem that Dynatrace has automatically detected, which could have sent me an alert that we have a response time degradation. And now if I expand this, I get to see that the impacted app is actually Minuteman. I know all of that. Um, let me just click on this to get a little bit more details because what we see here is that Dynatrace tells me there is an issue, how many calls it impacts. Um, I also get to see the, uh, the service degradation, which means I get to see that it's this particular workload. And if I click on analyze response time degradation, that's a really cool feature. Just click on it. And then Dynatrace basically tells me with one click, hey, your biggest problem is active wait time because it waits the most of the time is spent in waiting. What is it waiting on? Well, it's waiting on connection acquisition. So it tries to acquire a connection to MySQL, and that has just increased from almost nothing to 3.73 seconds on average over that period of time. And we also have some failed connection requests. So you don't have to be an expert in this to analyze this with Dynatrace, but I wanted to first go through kind of the step-by-step -step approach before ending up here, because this is really what we do. We are automating uh, the analysis of these problems, right? And whether you're looking into this through um, the lens uh, of, um, of a dashboard, right? You could start here and you can see that um, five problems are ongoing, so you can react just to problems. Or um, the way I started, I did more the exploratory diagnostic use case. I picked the response time spike and then from here drilled down. Um, yeah, I think this is it what I wanted to show you today. I hope this was a little bit educational. Remember, connection pools are everywhere uh, in, in, in every architecture. They need to be properly sized on the one side. They're also connect, allowing one component to connect to another component. And if that component becomes slower, that means these connections are occupied longer or used longer. So if new requests are coming in that try to get a new connection, they can't because it's blocked. So um, hopefully this was educational. Thank you so much. And also thanks, Thomas, for the great dashboard uh, that he built in the demo environment here. Uh, see you later. Bye.